Well, hey there everybody, Kay here on the homestead in Tennessee. I've been doing a series about my water here. One of the main requisites in me looking for a homestead property was a source of water, other than city water. I'm not off-grid, but I want to be able to be off-grid if I have to be, if I need to be. So I have put out a couple of videos about the water situation. This is my cistern. You've heard about my cistern. If you've been watching me, you've heard about it a few times. And if you're new here, then this is an update to what's going on with the cistern. So I had the water tested by the water department, and it turns out there was E. coli in the cistern, which is not uncommon. Bird poop, you know, on the roof and all that. A lot of people have written me and said, you know, that's a, a source of E. coli. What I decided to do is I was able to get in touch with the man who actually built this house. And although I didn't film it, he came over last Saturday and he actually built the cistern. So I learned about how it was built and I learned that there is, I mean, I thought there was, but we didn't know where it was in the yard. There's a four inch PVC clean out drain going straight down from I think it was six, four or six inches concrete floor in it with this reinforced. The two times I had it cleaned out, they brought a lot of goop out, but you know, so much sediment uh, lands on the floor and it just builds up uh, over time. And I don't even think the people before me, they were only here a year and the people before that, there was an elderly couple, uh, they passed away and it wasn't even being used for probably 20 years. <laughs> Uh, and they poked a hole in the side just to let the water out so it wasn't overflowing, I guess. My plumber came over today and he had a probe. He specifically brought a probe so that we could find that clean out. And he found it. And this is what happened. Okay, so we have located the clean out drain for the cistern. And I don't know, it's probably been many, many years. Decades, right? 20. 20 years since it's been opened. And we are going to see water and muck explode out of there. Yeah, there's some weight on it. Somebody want to go get that cap before it... I mean, there wasn't that much muck. He's trying to divert some of the water to save the garden. Although the garden looked pretty washed out just from the recent rain.
I mean, how will you cap it if you can't? I mean, the water pressure would stay on. Oh dear. Oh, it smells bad. This part does down here. Yeah, yeah. As we clean it, we'll get where it's back to good again. Oh my gosh, there's already huge uh, the rain. The four inches of rain kind of ruined the garden already down there. Can't get around there. Well. Right. Right. Oy, oy, oy. Oh well. There's always spring to get it in shape. We haven't turned the electric off. Now the water's going across the road. Be careful what you wish for, right? You've heard that expression? Well, I wanted the bottom to be sucked out, but that's not what happened. <laughs> All that was very exciting. You know, there was just a little bit of brown stinky goo, and then it was just four inches of water shooting down the yard through my garden, washed out the whole section where the cabbages, marigolds, uh, Egyptian spinach, blue spice basil, uh, all that stuff I was growing down there. It's just, it's in rivulets now. I guess I should have thought of this. I just wanted to get the dead stuff off the bottom. Yeah, I saw you done that. After it was flooding the, the garden and running across the road, Randy said, you know, if anybody hits that water and has an accident, they're going to, I'm going, oh my gosh. So I'm standing down in the road going like this. I mean, I was in a boat when I was young and when you go like this, <clears throat> to the to the guy driving the boat and he slows down three different vehicles i'm going like this you know like slow down pointing at the water you know and they right through it you know someone at this point i'm realizing oh my gosh we can't get that plug back in there screw that back in there with that volume of water the whole thing's gonna drain out that is not something i even contemplated duh you know we're discussing the plan and Randy says, oh, now the nasty stuff is coming out. Okay, prepare yourself. Oh my gosh, that's like tar. <sighs> oh my, that smells horrible. I must be on the other side, I can't even smell. Oh. Oh, I smell it now. Yeah. It was so clear before, I thought that first thing was it. I wish I'd known about this a year and a half ago. Well, he's gonna have a job cleaning that out. It's probably that deep mud. Did you stick that stick no, in there? You can look and see it. If you last time you yeah. tried to crack it like already because you didn't know where that was. Uh -huh. Oh gosh. So it's thicker on this end, right? Isn't that what you said? It's it's the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, golly, what a mess. Yeah. 
we're going to leave this open for another couple of minutes. Put the cap back on. Wait for the next rain, but the cap won't be tight, and I'm going to come down here and open it. And uh, let it out, and I'm going to do that a couple of times, and I'm just going to hope that I have rain to fill this thing back up. So this is three hours later. I'm just walking down to see what things look like. And this poor garden just got almost washed out. Over here we have a nice stand of mustard and phacelia. And over there, winter rye. But the deer did jump over the fence because they broke the this strand of lights they broke and I've tied it over there but I don't know if it's actually going to work there's solar more rain is on the way and it's dark and cloudy and cold so I'm gonna finish up the day by building fire this mustard looks good I should come down and pick a mess tomorrow and cook it. You can see the prints in there. Easily see the prints. This part. Gosh, it almost looks like they came in since the flood. <laughs> oh boy. Are we going to be able to fix that somehow? I don't know. Got a lot of hay. I could just cover the whole thing with hay. Kind of had to make a mess of the yard. Oh, well. I like my new boots. When we were doing that work down here, I thought, you know, it looks like a stream bed through here. <laughs> and guess what? I guess that's exactly what it was at one time, you know, because they probably, when they were using it regularly, they probably cleaned it out once a year or something. Boy. That just laid that grass right down, didn't it? Oh, boy. I'm tired. Oh, my gosh. That, that looked like, you know, a thin version of blackstrap molasses with a very bad smell. So, <laughs> we have a plan, you know, to let it rain back in there and, you know, sweep it out and let it go down and rain and sweep, you know. So it's going to, it's going to be a process. It's going to take a while. And I pray that we have plenty of rain for me to fill that back up before spring planting. So that's the story. If you're interested in building a sustainable homestead, wanting to know what some of the challenges are, be sure you subscribe to my channel, click the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode, an episode <laughs> right here on the homestead. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video. These are absolutely everywhere. More ants live on this property than anything else. Oh. Wow. Oh, if I could have only gotten these leaves ground up.